today's video i'm going to be doing an anti-haul it has been so long since i've done an anti-haul but one of my friends especially always requests this so Brittany girl this is for you and all of you other folks who like my anti-hauls uh, I really have not been buying makeup I bought a couple of things but I'm not really into the very trendy thing so let's get into my anti-haul the first thing that I just refuse to buy into the hype and purchase is the Fenty popsicle juice satin lipstick these remind me of like circa 1995 lip smacker products and I want to say one of my friends tried it and she said that it was basically not worth it they just look very sheer and I believe they're like maybe $19 I don't know I'm just really into either a gloss or a full coverage lip stain or lipstick but this is the reason why it was so hard for me to try Fenty Beauty products because I feel like so many of them are so gimmicky and I'm really just into like the staple makeup brands that just bring us consistently great makeup products and this little Fenty glossy stick. It just looks like a gimmick and yeah, I'm just not here for it. The next thing is the Huda Resting Boss Bitch or maybe not <laughs> Face Mist. First of all, I just feel like, why did they have to name it that? Secondly, I believe it was expensive as well. And thirdly, I'm not a big fan of setting mist. There is one that I wanna try by Glow because it smells like watermelon and it has more skincare-esque type properties. But generally, I'm just not into a lot of setting sprays or finishing sprays that are higher end just because I feel like they're mostly like water and alcohol and as far as like keeping your makeup locked in keeping you from getting oily throughout the day or night they never deliver on that for me so yeah and then when i saw the name of this product i was just like that's kind of embarrassing i wouldn't really want to pull that out and you're at church or work and somebody like oh what's the name of that product and you're like oh it's just my resting boss bitch face like no i can't <laughs> The next item is the Melt Gemini Eyeshadow Palette. And honestly, I think this palette just looks very ugly. <laughs> that was probably so mean, but it's also nothing that is innovative. We've all seen the typical warm tone uh, eyeshadow palette. I'm not even sure why they had to call it Gemini because like I'm a Gemini and most things they're either going to have like a twin component or they're going to be very bright and vivacious because that's usually our personality but this just looks like baby food in a palette I don't know I mean I'm sure if you're just starting out with makeup maybe you need these colors but I feel like for most of us who are really into eyeshadow and things like that like we have all these colors and they're honestly very blah. There's only really two colors in here that are pretty and that I would even want, but I wouldn't spend $60 on this palette. Now I have not tried any Melt Cosmetics eyeshadows, so maybe I'm missing out on the hype, but I guess we'll never know because I won't be purchasing that. The next one is the Sephora Moschino palette. I actually think this is another thing that's very gimmicky. I also don't really like when fashion houses collaborate with Sephora to put out palettes because I just feel like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I was into Moschino, maybe I would like it, but I don't know. It just looks so gimmicky once again, and the colors look very muted. And anytime I've ever tried a regular Sephora collection palette, they're just not up to par. They're dusty, they kick up a lot of dust, they're not very pigmented, they're not opaque, and they're not gonna look like, they don't translate well onto the skin, especially if you are of a deeper skin tone. So yeah, I just, uh, it just seems so gimmicky. I don't know, you guys know I just don't like gimmicky things. The next thing is the Huda Beauty Not Your Mama's Pantyhose Body Highlighter. Okay, girl. Now, the crazy thing is, I actually do really want a body shimmer, body highlighter, even though I'm sure I have some products like that that I just haven't used because I don't really like 
the idea of something on me though I think they're really pretty especially if we're going on vacation but that product is $50 and I feel like for the bulk of us we're probably only going to use it maybe a couple times this whole season and I feel like you can probably make that with baby oil and a pigment a loose pigment or find something at the drugstore that's the reason why I didn't get the Fenty body glow whatever that product is called i actually had it in my sephora cart and then i realized like why are you gonna buy that because you're gonna use it on one vacation this summer and then it's gonna sit somewhere and you're probably gonna lose it <laughs> you're probably gonna lose it but i feel like you could just make a product like that a couple of my friends on youtube have put out videos about how to make like a body glow so something like that i don't know and the fact that it was so expensive and then the name of it i don't know i'm just not really into products that have these little gimmicky names it just I don't know I guess it's cute and it's appealing for certain people maybe I'm just getting old I'm just not into it then we have the Tatcha the satin skin mist and let me see how much this product is Caramel dripping in my bed. Okay, so this is supposed to be, I guess, the sister product to the Tatcha Dewy Mist or whatever it's called. This is the Satin Skin Mist and it's supposed to be good for oily skin. It's supposed to help combat oiliness. It has some clay properties in it and it is $50 for 1.35 fluid ounces. Once again, it's way too expensive, and I feel like for the majority of us who have really oily skin, no setting spray is really gonna keep us matte all day long. I guess if you have combination skin, something like this would work, but I would just rather buy like a loose powder or something, or a blotting powder, because I don't know, no primer, no moisturizer, no setting spray has ever kept me matte over maybe a couple of hours, especially when I'm going outside. Now, they can keep my makeup intact as far as not running. I know when I was out this past weekend, a guy was asking me like, why wasn't my makeup coming off and why wasn't I sweating? And I said, well, one reason is because I'm standing still. As soon as I start moving, that will change. But I do think the makeup products that I use, since they are geared more towards oily skin, they do stay in place more. So maybe a mist like this would help your makeup not shift and slide, but as far as appearance, oily that always happens to me no matter what um and I remember watching Stephanie Nicole's video on the dewy mist and her saying that it has horrible properties in it as far as what you're actually applying to your skin. So yeah, I'm just not here for it. Have I ever tried anything by Tatcha? I don't think so. They're just too expensive for my budget. Like, I'm sorry. I'll buy a $15 face mist but not a $50 one. Mm-mm. Okay, we also have the Too Faced Shake Your Pom Poms. <laughs> okay, so this is a palette. And honestly, you guys, it's cute. But, and I hate to say this because I really do tend to like a lot of the products that Too Faced puts out that I do try. But so many of their palettes are just like 75% shadows that they've already put out and while I think the packaging is cute and the colors are nice like how many neutral bronzy small palettes with like two pops of color do we need I don't know but then again I feel like Too Faced is very gimmicky but I could also see why somebody would want to buy something like this I do like the mini palettes when I travel now I do remember last year I bought two Huda Beauty mini palettes and I have not traveled with them yet or if I have traveled with them I have not used them so I don't really know how I feel about mini palettes I'd rather just pay 50% more and get a full size palette because any palette I take is gonna fit in my makeup bag. But with Too Faced, I just wanna see some new colors. Maybe that's why I'm really liking ABH right now because she's giving us palettes like this that we haven't seen. And I love it. So yeah, um, I'm gonna need Miss Too Faced to step her cookies up just a little bit. I just feel like these are all shades that we've seen that are regurgitated. Okay, the next is actually something that... <sighs> 
I'm on the fence about, but I know I'm not gonna purchase it. It's the Juvia's Place Foundation. And I have seen my girl CJ do a review of this product. And I wanna say I've seen a couple other reviews, but the main reason, and I'm just gonna be honest, the main reason why I'm not gonna purchase it is number one, I don't like to buy foundation. Well, okay, so there's two reasons. One, I don't like to buy foundation online if it's not a repurchase. So if it's just a new foundation coming out, I really don't wanna purchase it online because I wanna go in store and try it out. And the second reason is because I hate the packaging. <laughs> The packaging reminds me of like a sunscreen or a body moisturizer or Soap and Glory's hand food. I like my foundations to look like this, although this is a concealer. I like them to be in a nice sleek container. I like them to have a pump, although I do have one that has a squeeze mechanism, but this is from the drugstore. So, you know, there are different standards for a foundation that costs like $10. But I like my foundations to be pretty substantial and I like them to look a certain way. And that combined with the fact that I have to buy it online, uh, I don't know. Now, when I have seen the reviews of this product, the ladies do like them. I just feel like at my age and where I am with my makeup collection, I'm going to stick to the foundations that I know and love. I really don't like trying out new foundations, especially if the packaging looks like that. And that's totally not a big deal, but I'm very particular about how the packaging is on things that I'm gonna use day to day. And so, sorry Juvia's Place, I will not be buying that. I actually don't have anything by Juvia's Place and it's probably because I can't go swatch it in store. <laughs> the next to last thing is the Kylie Skin Skincare Line. Now, I've only seen one review of this collection and it was by Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. I. I mean, the, their final thoughts were what we could have all thought that this is this is Kylie's MO. She puts out collections probably what, like once a month, you know, all the girls, the young girls go out and buy them. And not to say that I don't trust a skincare line from someone who's like, I don't know, 20 to 24 because that's not it. But I just don't think she's really sitting in the lab like looking at product ingredients and thinking about things like that when it comes to skincare. Uh, now, do I think those products are probably not effective? No, I just, I'm getting up there in age and I just would not purchase a Kylie skincare product. I think there are drugstore products that work just as nice. And if I want something that's really effective, I know which brands to choose. I don't know. I'm just uh, like, uh. <laughs> I feel like every month Kyle's coming out with something new. It's annoying. And then of course, last but not least, Miss Kim Kardashian West has the Miss West collection, which looks just like everything else she has already put out. I'm honestly not even sure why Kim Kardashian puts out makeup palettes other than for obvious reasons to make money. Uh, because she really doesn't even do like extravagant makeup anymore. She's more into very muted looks with like glowy highlighted cheeks and lashes. Um, but once again, that's what her makeup palette looked like. So yeah, just very generic to me. I don't see anything innovative, but once again, I'm at the point in my makeup collection in life where I'm not gonna buy things unless they truly add something that I'm missing in my collection. So I'm not gonna go out and just buy another neutral palette just for the hell of it. Uh, so I guess depending on what you're looking for in terms of your beauty items, that might be something useful. But you know, the Kardashian clan makes it in all my videos because I just feel like they just, they purely do this for the money. And um, I don't know, I'm just not here for any of their products. But that's neither here nor there. I hope you guys enjoyed this anti-haul. Uh, I like to do anti-hauls when I'm gonna do a traditional haul. So I will be doing one of those this month. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.